when Jomo Kenyatta first left Kenya in 1929 to campaign for land rights in British political circles, he faced lots of rent troubles. The British intelligence sabotaged his job offers and started following him. In intelligence papers, they described him as slightly splay-footed, almost invariably hatless, but sometimes wears a blue beret. He was also slim built, with two punctures at the top of the right ear. Kenyatta's occupation was that of an editor. This allowed him to mingle with writers, activists and publishers. Though this first trip was short, and he returned home in 1930 his second trip lasted until 1946. 95 Cambridge Street in London, Kenyatta's residence, is now a listed building. He had a painful stay here, unable to pay rent, at times, for 18 months. At one point, he was reported to the colonial office by his landlord, Mr. Sidney Hoskin. Mr. Hoskin thought Kenyatta was refusing to pay. A colonial office letter, addressed to a Mr. Wade, suggested as much. Hoskin says Kenyatta is still well-dressed and well-fed and goes abroad at times. He is now in Denmark. While KCA wanted Kenyatta to return, a colonial official, Mrs. McGregor Ross, felt that KCA did not trust Kenyatta with money. They seem to want him back, but wisely, won't trust him with the cash. In April 1936, Mr. Hoskin wrote to the KCA chairman, Jesse Karaoke, regarding Kenyatta's rent. Kenyatta keeps telling my wife you will be sending a check. At times I feel very disgusted at the whole affair and have wanted to put this matter in solicitors' hands, and, also see our foreign secretary as to your association affairs. We have kept Mr. Kenyatta for three years not receiving any reward for our generosity. At one point, Kenyatta left. Then, he returned. A 1938 Metropolitan Police report noted, he still owes a fair amount of money for rent from previous residents there during 1936 but appears to be able to convince the landlord, Mr. Hoskin, that he can obtain the arrears from KCA. As an assurance, KCA wrote a letter to Mr. Hoskin saying, the whole Kikuyu community was too busy in raising your money. But they wanted Kenyatta to write to them and explain all his troubles and his wishes to return to Kenya. Kenyatta was then sharing a house on 15 Cranley Street with a Jamaican lecturer, Miss Diana Stock. Before KCA raised £400 for Kenyatta's ticket, the Second World War broke out. Kenyatta and Dinah left London for Sussex. It was the end.